Welcome to Long Arm Wednesday. I'm Laura Lynn of the Mama Pop Quilt Shop. We're very happy you could join us here today. I'm working on the rainbow fishy quilt that I just did on the weekend project. Uh, it turned out fantastic. I'm really, really thrilled with it. And in fact, I will actually, I was going to show you, but I've, I've done a couple of little small fishies here too. So, but you'll see it as I'm going around on the little camera. So, hopefully. Um, so, what I've done is actually just stitched in the ditch around the fish, and then I put a nice little um, elaborate feather triangle up in the, the, the white triangles up here and up here and up here. And I will surround the fishies with that and I'll do something different up in the border. There's a nice little um, shell border that I like, so I'll probably put that up in there. But my goal is to pretty much quilt each of these fishies differently. A little something different, they can kind of be the same, but you know, every fish is different. So we're gonna work on this one right here. I kind of like because of the pink and the orange and I'm just gonna use white thread, I believe, for all the fishes. I may change, but since there's white in this one, I, I'm just gonna use white. So I, I'm probably just white. So what I've done is I've just chalked it out about an inch apart. Oh, sorry, right about there and there. And then here to here is an inch, and then from there to there is an inch. And I'm just gonna try and follow some of the lines to give me a base to work off first, and then I'm gonna fill in some of those squares, okay? So let me just, I've taken it <clears throat> off the belt, and it is on its ruler plate. And I just take my little ruler, come down to the next chalk line, and then come back this way. And then come down to the next chalk line. <clears throat> and just come up and you're just tracing you're just tracing what you've just chalked out because you're going to set a pattern in in what you know what we're creating we're going to make a little pattern in there somewhere all right make sure you're holding your ruler down really strong because mine seems to get away from me sometimes and um, I think it's just because one end kind of comes up when I'm not fully pushing down right in the center like I should be. And it kind of throws me for a loop. Okay, there we go. Now we're just going to come down just a smidge. Uh, no, I don't think we're, we're good for that one right here. Just on an angle. Just a smidge. Okay, now we're going to start off on the other way and come up. Okay, and then we'll follow this to the other point and come down and follow over to the other section and come up. And that's we're just going to work our way, giving ourselves a grid to work off of. You know, not everything's going to be circles, not everything's going to be hearts, not everything's going to be loops. You know, you want to give yourself maybe, you know, a little bit of structure in this fish. You know, he's already a, a pretty funky color. Okay. I realize now would probably be a good time to actually have a uh, ruler on my my um, my little hard shell here, my little hard ruler there. Then I would be lining them up correctly. Right now, I'm just going by my lines I've created. It's got to come up just a smidge and then over to here. Okay, and then up just a smidge. And then there. Okay, now did I get everybody? I think I did. There's all these little squares to work off of. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to pick what I want to do in these squares, right? And I don't want to do them each one, like each one has something, to, uh, you know, um, uh, in it. So I want to do every opposite one. So this is a nice big square here. I think I'm going to start off with that one. And I think I'm just going to do a little back and forth. Just a little back and forth. We call ribbons. Do a little curl on the end of it. Okay. Okay, see, I've done that one, I can follow that little line, and now I can come down right over to here and do the same thing on the way back, okay? And follow it, you can go either onto this side, and then just do your little wave, filling in your square. Then you can do it backwards and forwards, like in, if you don't like that, you can go up and then do this opposite way. So you're doing, like a big, um, like a checkerboard. See? 
It's all up to you. Go one way, and then you can come back and do the other way. Keep them busy, you know? And I did the double, double batting. So it's gonna really make those ones that I don't stitch up pop right up and give that fish a lot of dimension. And I have plans to do fishy scales and I have plans to do swirls. And I've got, you know, I did some little sketches the other night trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And there's actually 25 fish, I believe. I think in the video when we shot it, I think I said there was 28, so. Um, but uh, nonetheless, you can make as many or as little as you like. And I just thought it was a good way to Example, your fabrics, or you've got a nice little collection, or you happen to like fishies, or what have you. You know, just fill it in. Like I say, do as big or as small as you like. Pick your thread. Alright, okay, so now that one's done. So we've done this row up here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we would technically leave this row right here alone. Okay. Oops, I think I hit my mic. I'm sorry if I got really loud. Um, I lost my fuzzy from it. And then we're just going to come down here because we want to leave that one alone and do the same thing that we were doing in the other one in this row. Okay. And remember, just stop when you come to your edge. Don't go continuing on through. Okay, come up. And then this one here. Just filling her in. And then back and forth. It's just going to make all these little fishies stand out that much more, I think. You know, a little bit of creativity going on to make them little special fish. You know, I did a big rainbow. It was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it, actually. And I, it was, it's one to go on the uh, to-do list again. Um, I like to mostly times just do one quilt once. But there's a few of them that I've actually done again, you know, because, you know, I think there's so many quilts to do. <laughs> I don't got time just to make them, you know, two of everything or ten of everything. <laughs> Even in that little tiny square that you think, oh, well, I don't really need it. It's not going to change the effect, but it actually would. It would have changed the effect of the whole fish. Okay, so that's there. That's that one. That one's not it. And we're actually right up at the top. Okay, so we'll come down on the other side just sign off the little stitches there so we've done um, on the outside of this one here 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 and here and then we've done this one and so we'll do this one next this row right here okay I'll have to come back and do the ziggity zag on those ones oops my silly mistake I hit the start button instead of the stitch button oopsies there tidy that up there we go whoops got too excited quilting up my fishes okay there we go. just back and forth or you could have each row a different pattern I mean you know it's it is completely up to you you are the creator you know it's whatever you desire they're your fishes right but I uh, got like, lots of compliments, great for kids quilts, you know, it's, uh, it's fun, you know, it's a great way for add a pop of color and a space. It's a great gift to give somebody you don't know what to give them, you know, it's great for a daycare, put numbers in the fish, you know, and each fish is a different number, each like patterned fish or something like that, right? Gets them to know colors, it gets them to know numbers or letters or... You know, you know, one more fish and we could have had one for every letter, letter of the alphabet, right? So. It's on 12 stitches per inch and I'm just using a, um, I think it's super white. Uh, just because I, I like that the way it looked better. I have white, super white, and then of course I've got many shades of um grays and tans and greens and that sort of thing. But when I first started off long arming, I thought, oh, I'll need every color of the rainbow. Not really. <laughs> it's 
Some people don't want black on their quilt <laughs> or burgundy. <laughs> so that's pretty much the little uh, what I'm working on here. Hopefully you can see a little bit of the texture. I'll try and come up and finish that one up there so I don't forget. Oops. Those ones up there. Just follow your previous stitch paths, okay? So you don't get confused and you don't screw anything up. Okay. And just think this is going to look like a whole other you know, really epic piece of, of art, even from the back, because I've got all my stitches going on, right? Okay, finish this one off, and then I know that at least the body of the fish is done. Okay. Lock those stitches in there. And I'm just going to do the tail the same way. I thought about maybe doing it um, uh, a little bit of a different angle, but I, I've just chalked it out. I'll, I'll do it the way it's, you know, it's meant to be. And then that way it all matchy matches. I may do that. I have a little one of the pink one uh, down in the little school of four fish here. Uh, I may hit do him exactly the same way. So as I did this one, we'll figure it out. So if you didn't put the little patch in like I did, it ends up with being 25 fish. Okay. Or yeah, 25 fish. Okay. I'll come back this way. Like there. And over and down and scoot it over and up and scoot it over and down okay so then I decide where at this point which one am I going to do uh, these two are the, probably the bigger squares so I'll probably stitch those ones and then leave that one plain and then touch up on these ones okay so if that's going to be one of them, we can put our little weeby wobby in there. And same with this one. And just filling it in the square or as much of the square as you, you can see, right? Okay, did I get that right? I think I got that right. Come up in here. There we go. We'll just finish this tail off and we'll call it along on Wednesday. So you have to... Take a look for uh, at next week. It won't. I won't be. Won't be done for for a while. So take a look at next week's long on Wednesday, and I'll have a, either some pictures at the end, or I'll hold it up during the show. Okay, so you can take a look at it. I was saying to um, to pop. I'd like to find a thread that's transparent or very neutral, so I could do the whole thing, and you would just have the art of the stitches and not necessarily the color of a fabric. You know what I mean? Does that, if that makes any sense? Because I think at things like this, I would like to use yellow on this, but then there's lots of thread changes and I don't know if I have like three of the right yellows. I think I only got one, you know, that sort of thing. So when you sign up for something like that, make sure you're committed for the whole thing. You have every color that you want to use. I guess you could repeat, but you know, adds a different effect to the backside, right? So, so hopefully uh, you like it out. And there's a little, little uh, block right here. Of course, I had to be a rebel and put one fish the other way, just because that's who I am. <laughs> and I just thought it was kind of cute to make a little, uh, a little pack of four, like for a little school of fish. And that's literally using the little extra ear tabs that we were doing on the uh, Amsterdam tulip quilt. That little extra bit that you could save and not toss away and put it in your scrap bucket. So good tip for that. Made use of it, okay? So thanks everybody for watching. We really appreciate it here at Mom and Pop Quilt Shop. And don't forget to like and subscribe and upvote and have any questions or suggestions, just leave it below. So thanks. Take care. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.